All right. We're going to see if we can redeem our game one punt, or our match one punt, with uh, going to one. And this hand could reasonably do it. Jungle Delver, turn one. Looks like opting turn two. Into Shapers. Into hopefully Pirate's Prize. Into hopefully Dreadmaw. And we're up against Green Red Dino Beatdown. So that's a little scary. There's a lot of power in, uh, in the Green Red Dinos. Imagine they cast us on dinosaurs. <laughs> it's a pretty good ramp. Good turn two play. Yep. So they could even be Naya dinos. This is man of any color. Okay, so that got us to our turn four pirates prize. Which is pretty good because we hit the land, then we have our turn 5 Dreadmaw, which might be big enough to contend with all the big stuff our opponent is going to throw at us. So they're adding white, but we don't know if it is white yet. Thrash of Raptors is pretty good. We may have to trade it with the Shapers. Although I like Shapers. I like Shapers enough that I might just keep it around for a while. This is our fifth land that we kind of need for the plan. But I'm going to kind of believe in the heart of the cards that we'll get there with Pirate's Prize. This, uh, this could be a very important part of our plan. The Entrancing Melody. We'll get this down. We can no longer attack with the Jungle Delver. If they play another dinosaur and pump the thrash, I probably block it. No, I don't know about the, all that. It's such a fast clock, though. It's a kind of an interesting decision. the The reason we got this shaper so late could be that people are already starting to be down on Merfolk. It's not my favorite tribe. Green blue really struggles for removal. Opponent. Is going to do some ramping. So that's not another dinosaur, which makes me inclined to take. The, oh, I guess it still pumps the thing to where we'd have to um, double block and maybe get blown out by Slash of Talons. I don't know if I want a two for one myself so much as I want to just take this four. I guess maybe this would have been this. I guess this will be the turn to chump it with the Jungle Delver, since our opponent will likely have better dinosaurs momentarily. Okay, so now we could get really punished for for bottoming that land if we don't hit a land with our Pirates Prize, but we get three draws to get there. And we did. So next turn, it's highly unlikely I'm blocking this thing. So I'm probably taking six next turn. Uh, but we get the Colossal Dreadmaw, which starts undoing things. Hmm. Instant speed answer to this. Lightning Strike. Okay. So the block would have been horrible. The double block would have been the blowouts. Okay. So we'll see what they that they play, if we hit a land, it might be in our better interest to Entrancing Melody the Thrash next turn. And then play out our Dread Maul. And then we're pretty far ahead. Especially if they play small dinos or non-dinos. Non-dinos it is. I kind of like grabbing the Thrash from them here. 
because we do get to make it huge when we finally get to attack with it. And we found our land. Downside is we're not blocking this turn, so we're taking four at least. But hopefully between steal your creature and play a giant creature, we can get back to where we need to be. Another New Horizons to pump up something. So they're dinosaur ramp, so there's got to be something crazy on their top end. Yeah, Fathom Fleet and New Horizons work pretty well together as well. So we're taking the seven. Which likely means we don't get to attack next turn. Yeah. We don't get to attack next turn, but... They sort of don't either. And Waker of the Wilds, Shapers of Nature, both have some inevitability. I suppose they're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so they can give it 5-5 five, five and trample, which is luckily still not enough to close out the game for us. But this is one of those situations where that ability actually looks better than one would think. Making leave up depths of desire something I am consistently going to be looking to do. So we'll play out this guy. Leave up depths of desire, pounce, which we probably play, and or draw a card. If they pop the Keeper to attack, we bounce. If they do anything else, we probably just try to kill the Keeper. Oh, I guess they were not actually at 8, because that's only for Dinosaur Spells. I'm more scared of the Fathom Fleet than I am scared of anything else. I'm not sure if that's right or wrong. They can only pump it to be a 5-3. But provided they don't have any special shenanigans in their hand. Losing the Dread Maw would be problematic, but... We'll see what our opponent has access to here. They are tanking on this decision, so they might have something relevant. But they have one card in hand, so if it's relevant, I feel like you cast it. Ah. <sighs> Good time for a beer break. It's got a good sourness to it, even through all the maltiness. It's a, it's honestly a very good uh, saison. I, I tend to not really like 
saisons. They're kind of hit and miss. I guess there's also a wide variety in the flavor profile you get in a saison. So, like I've had darker black saisons that I, I quite like because they're almost stout like. And then this one is definitely not not in that category. It's more malty. Tastes almost like a lager, but it's it's definitely got that um, session ale taste to it. Okay, so not sure what's taking our opponent. So in lieu of uh, just talking about beer, I'll pause here for a sec. So it seems it was connection trouble. They've reconnected. Let's see if they have anything relevant. Which I guess would be that instant speed plus three plus three. Theirs is the deck that would want it. It would be pretty good for them, but not quite the end of the world for us. Ooh, they have it. Or a fight spell. So they t three for one to get rid of the Colossal. Huh. I am not sure that's a winning line, but I suppose you've got to do what you've got to do at a certain point in the game. I don't know that there's any hasty threats that we should really be playing in fear of here. Just in case I'll hold up the um, depths of desire. Try to limit what we can lose to. It's probably better to play out the Diviner here, but I do want to limit what we can lose to, and what I will do is take the counter off of the Thrash and draw an extra card if, they, if there's nothing there. So here I'll play the Waker and leave up the Depths again. I don't even need to attack with the Water Trap Merfolk because this is a two-turn clock. And I can play more defensively and play the Headwater Sentries over the Waker. So I think I'll do that being that I'm winning on board. It's not like I need to um, produce more to the board. I just need to not die. The dinosaur that comes out and destroys all non-dinos is a problem, but probably still beatable with depths, maybe. So we get to bounce it. Get in for three still. I guess the reach is still a problem. So maybe that would have been the worst case. What were we going to draw? Ouch. So yeah, we closed that right about where we needed to. So pretty aggressive green-red. I'm not sure there's much we want out of the board. Could be that we want to dive down over... Yeah, I think on the, on the draw we want to dive down over a jungle delver. And everything else seems like it's fine. We just gotta get our value cards and not get curved out upon. See what we can do.
So our opponent's connection is bad, or they just take a while to do stuff. All right. Yeah, this is a sneepable hand. It's <laughs> it's actually not as exciting, but uh, card selection with opt is fine. Shapers of nature is great. So we have some of the stuff we need. Commune with dinosaurs. Opponents all in. We didn't see much of their top end dinos, but we have to assume it's there with all the ramp they were running. I guess we didn't see a ton of... Oh, no, we did. We did. Because it wasn't just the pillar. It was the uh, plus one, plus one counter. Three mana. Enchant land card. I forget the name. It'll take, I think it's New Horizons. It'll take me a while to get the names. Okay. That's also pretty good to have. Card is so sweet on that card. What's funny about it is the dinosaur doesn't even seem to be the focus of the card, you know, but the point gets across well enough. No real reason to opt during their turn, but it needs a reason. Opt in response to 2 2. Show them what for. I like Pirate's Prize. It's slow in this matchup, but it really it helps us power out our Dread Maw. Going for another instant speed opt. I suppose there is a reason. No, there's not. Because <laughs> I was say it, it puts us to eight, we'd have to discard, but only if we missed a land drop. Art is also sweet on opt with the pterodons in the background and the gorgeous looking water and uh and island scenery. That looks incredible. This is Craig J. Spearing. I hope he did some some land art. Because the worst part of the opt for me is the pirate in the way, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But I'm not a pirate guy. So we try not to get run over. Shapers of Nature into Pirate's Prize into Dreadmaw. They missed a three, which is, is great for us. As far as the don't get run over plan. Kind of sucks if this guy gets lightning struck, which they have the option. Probably pretty excited about it, It'll, but what can you do? Can't really beat the lightning strike. They might have left it up here. Means we'll take another two. Yeah, they did. I still think we try to pirate prize the Dreadmaw. Depends, I guess, on what they play now. Because we might just need the 2 3 body. But I think I'm fine taking 4 to have a turn 5 Dreadmaw. Dreadmaw should be hard for them to deal with. Yeah, I think we've got to play the Pirate's Prize. The upside is just so there. This is fine with me. Because barring some hasty threat I don't know about, they only get one extra damage in. Oh, now I guess they get a ton of extra damage in. But the Tempest Caller can't really block either of these things particularly well. It's kind of a tough call. Because we get a natural Dreadmaw soon, it might be better to just have the blocker for the Fathom Fleet, because the Fathom Fleet is going to hit us for a lot. So I think... I think this is where I've landed on this. But I'm not sure about it. Because we hit a natural Dreadmaw pretty soon. This way we take three from the Keeper. And we can block the Fathom Fleet, potentially. They're dropping something big. Burning Sun's Avatar 
is really bad for us. Dinosaur bomb. I'm not sure there was really a, a way to win in that exchange. So we got to get maybe a run of ground here to get back in there, and we didn't. So that's kind of surprising to to lose with that hand, with what that hand was capable of. But the opponent's cards just lined up where they needed to. They had the lightning strike. They had the big guy. This could be the matchup for Shaper's Sanctuary. But I think we just run it. We run it back. We're on the play now. So the turn 5 Dreadmaw means a lot more. Early Air Elemental means a lot more. Shaper's Sanctuary is helpful because it will get us through our deck if they, if they keep targeting us, but really, what did we see that targets our creatures? The Lightning Strike and the um, the Red Sun Tyrant, or whatever that card's name is. Yeah, and we were pretty close to stabilizing. If we had stuck the 3-drop, we would have won that game pretty easily. And if they didn't have exactly that 6-6 six, six that does 6 damage spread across me and a creature, then uh, I think we would have been able to stabilize in a turn or two anyhow. But we know that's one of their, their big payoffs for going in on, in on dinos, and it is a great, great dino payoff. So now we're taking it to the surprise rounds and seeing if we can take it down on the play. We just need a pretty good hand, a good curve out, some good value, and uh, I think we I think we can take them. They, their deck is aggressive, so it relies a lot on being on the play, and we can get get to the late game and hopefully outvalue them. Let's see what we got. So I'm going to keep this on the strength of Opt, and of course Entrancing Melody, but the Opt should help us hit a Forest which we do need to before we, we do anything in this hand, so it's kind of troubling, but taking an early drop with Entrancing Melody is a legitimate option. So let's see what we get here. I think we can safely put that to the bottom. So we need to hit a land next turn. Or we may find ourselves in deep, deep trouble. So we don't get the Ray Trigger, but we get our dude to block the Fathom Fleet, or eat a Lightning Strike, I suppose. And then Depths of Desire will help us cast our stuff, which is pretty valuable. Yeah, so they don't want to make that trade, which makes sense. I'd be more than happy to make that trade. And then Blossom Dryad, not too exciting. And we hit a land. So Depths of Desire will get us a decent ways. We can take Fathom Fleet, but that doesn't particularly excite me. It might be right to bounce the Blossom Dryad now, so they don't have access to the ramp. Now we have a treasure. A hit land drop now means we get our Dreadmaw. It's 
So you kind of want to hit her land. That would be super duper sweet. If we don't hit the land, I think we take the Dryad, which in a roundabout way still lets us get our Dreadmaw eventually. But we got there. So unfortunately we don't have the dive down to protect it. So we got to be kind of careful about what removal we walk into. But if they have the raid deal six to the Colossal Dreadmaw anyway, we're in trouble. The next turn we can go Waker and have Dive Down up. They can have their 6-6 their six, six now, which is pretty scary for us. Because the only real way we're dealing with that is blocking it with Dreadmaw. And it comes in and kills Stormfleet. It domes us for 3. Really does make sense to run that as a finisher in an aggressive shell. It puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. Very hard to answer. Looks like it might be coming down this turn. Yep. So that is sort of annoying. Run a ground, not even super great against it. But dive down potentially, potentially very rad here. Letting our Dreadmaw win the combat with it. If nothing goes wrong. So that's really got to be our hope. Our hope for winning this game is that nothing goes wrong in this combat. And I think we take the intuitive blocks. You know, it might be nice to keep the Waker of the Wilds around. I don't believe there's too much that completely blows us out. They give it plus three plus three and trample that's bad for us. So I think what I will do is double block it. Just because we I have to get that thing off the board. And we take a big hit from the fathom. Fleet Firebrand, probably. And then that also lets me know that the coast is clear for the dive down. I think that has to be it. Just because... Losing to the plus three plus three on it would be pretty frustrating. This is a very key turn for us.
so they have it so we we had to play around it if they have additional pump we're sort of equally annoyed So we still have to dive down to save our dorkier threat. If they have an additional pump spell, we're still in trouble. I'm not sure what pumps are one red. It looks like they have a, something they can pay a cost on. Oh, because they have two red available. Okay, just pump again. Whew. Still good stuff for them, getting in for four here, and we have to lose our 6-6. Six, six. But that did mean the double block was necessary. So now... We have several options. Oh, what do we want to do? I think we just want to entrancing melody this thing since it is the biggest thorn in our side, it attacks for the most right now. Our 3-3 three three does a good enough job. Blocking their 2-2. Two two. They can blow up the Fire Shrine Keeper now to blow up everything that we have. which may be what they opt to do. That is a little frustrating for us because it leaves them with a 2-2 and us with nothing. Shapers is the exact draw. Because it blocks the 2-2. Or if they have Lightning Strike, we might still have to take the damage from it. But... It's possible that Shapers run away with the game if, if they are allowed to. So we have a ton of mana, and most of what we want to do can be done at instant speed. Let's figure it out together. We can put counters on stuff. We can opt and run the ground, but we can't do all of it. Sort of an interesting attack. See how much mana they spend on pumping. I guess they'll only spend two mana on pumping it. Let's just run it aground. I still get to play it out, so it doesn't really do much for us. but we see what we can hit with opt. I don't think we want that. <laughs> or that. Or that. 
They chose not to play it. Back out. Could be that they're leaving up on friendly fire then to beat the shaper. So I'm not sure why they didn't play the random fleet back out. Oh, oh, oh! I'm, I'm dumb. Run aground takes it to. Okay, it's better than I. Better than I even was playing it as. So now we run into. Okay, if they have lightning strike, they kill it in response. We're fortunate that they don't. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can draw an extra card. Oh, well, probably best to do that at instant speed. If it comes to that. Because that way we're out of lightning strike territory and we can get out of unfriendly fire territory. Use our drover, but we'll trade with their the only thing they can attack with profitably. Okay. Oh wait. Let's play the land we need. Now we don't lose to unfriendly fire. We do lose to the raid burn spell. Weirdly enough, time is going to be a factor in this game. So one of our shapers is still out of unfriendly fire range. We could trade off a shaper with the dagger tooth, but I don't think we want to. I suppose we, we have to be worried about just dying, so I guess we trade off a shape with a dagger tooth. Alright, let's find out if how much trouble we're in. decent amount of trouble. What this is a great draw for getting out of trouble. can't really safely attack in. We're within burn spell range, like unfriendly fire plus lightning strike if there's multiples. Now this will help us attack. Next 
next turn, that is. Communion with dinosaurs. That's really good. It's very, very good this late in the game. Good news is it can't help him find burn. At the very least. We have another, no, we don't have another Colossal Treadmaw to draw into, so we're kind of low on bombs. Did it, does it tell us what they got? Did it, no cards into their hand, so they must have just whiffed on it. Which is not excellent for them. That's not excellent for us either. But, I think we do have to attack with the Dreadmaw. I'd rather have another blocker up so he, he just limits like our our worst case scenario. Okay, Thrash of Raptors. Deep Root Warrior is just fine. Hold up an Exali's Keeper activation for if they go on the big attack. So hopefully, we have this one locked up. There's some scary stuff our opponent could play. That could potentially steal this from us. Okay. I'm not convinced that's one of them. Although it does, you know, it sets them up for later on down the road. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what on earth is this? <laughs> I cannot believe it. So our opponent scoops it up. Wow. The Sun Crown Hunters was actually going to make it in very interesting because it puts us to three. Maybe dead to um, a burn spell potentially from them. Another lightning strike. And also if they... Because uh, if we'd attack with the 6-6, six, six, they'd probably block with the um, Sun Crown Hunters dealing us three. So it meant that we had to mind our blocks because we could also lose to a pump spell on the counterattack. But... Tempest Caller off the top made that trivial, and we got to 2-1. Uh, these were fun, exciting uh, matches, so that was super cool, and we got some packs out of our effort. All right, Ixalan, uh, pretty fun to draft so far. I hope it's good for repeat drafts since it's tribal and so synergy-focused. I hope it doesn't start to feel stale, but um, I'll take the uh, Merfolk win when I can get it. Thanks for watching.